All right, traders, friends and family, team and fans from around the world. I have an incredible guest with us today, someone that I have been following on Twitter for a while, someone who inspires both courage and conviction to continue trading even when times are tough. I'm joined by Alan Owen, a.k.a. the Divergent Trader. Alan, how are you, man? I'm very good, man. That's a, a brilliant uh <laughs> start <laughs> thank you uh, of course man absolutely <laughs> absolutely so how did you end up deciding to create this twitter profile um just basically to to connect that was the main thing because you know training is quite a long profession um you're, you're on your own a lot so i just thought it'd be good to reach out to other traders help other traders and uh yeah basically connects is the main thing yeah yep how uh how long have you been trading I've been training since 2015. And what's your main focus? Um, markets wise. Yep. Yeah, mainly um, I trade Forex 80% of the time. Um, the rest I'll trade like uh, a few commodities and uh, indices, you know, like gold, oil, and uh, NASDAQ, things like that. Um, it's mainly breakout strategies that I trade. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the main strategies that I do. How often do you find yourself taking trades? Um, well, with my system, it's quite a high probability uh, system. So I could be waiting a long time. So if I'm lucky, I might get one trade a day. Um, so yeah, it, it can vary. Some I can only get maybe two a week. So it, it, it varies, but it's a lot less frequency than most most traders. Yeah, I'm a, and I'm a day trader as well. So I mainly trade the 15 minute. So... Yeah, still getting a lot less trades than, than most air traders. But the patience patience pays. Yeah, patience pays, man. That is a true it, it story. Absolutely true story. <laughs> okay. So fifteen minute time frame, that's your primary time primary time frame? Yeah, my primary one. Uh, I do sometimes go up to the one hour, very rarely like the four hour daily. I, I do longer swings, but it's mainly four hour, uh, sorry, one hour and the fifteen. Got it. Do you have a currency pair that you stick to primarily? No, I trade a basket of currencies. Um, obviously, there's certain ones that I prefer. Yep. Um, like a pound, dollar. That, the, the ones with more liquidity, you know, the, the majors and stuff like that. They're the main ones that I like to go Sure. Uh, go off. What got, what got you into trading, Alan? What got me into trading? Well, I think it's the same as most people. At the beginning, you were... You, you, you do it for the money, the freedom, you know, all that stuff. But in the end, what, what stuck with me is um, I just love the challenge, the the, 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 self, the pursuit of self-mastery. That's what kept me going, the, the actual, the fun of it, the game, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's what kept me going. The pursuit of self-mastery. <laughs> I like <laughs> that's, that. That's a good tweet that I might use that for. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so tough to do that. Why do you feel that trading is one of the harder professions out there for individuals to kind of master your psychology? Why? Because trading it'll bring it brings out all your flaws, all your insecurities, and it forces you to uh, to to like realize them and overcome them. And most people they don't want to do that. You know what I mean? The uh, no one wants to be in pain and reflecting on on your insecurities, your weaknesses. That's that's painful, and a lot of people don't want to do that. So. Yeah, I'd probably say that's why. What insecurities do you feel or do you notice are the main ones that people have to fight through? So th there is quite a few. If if we talk about myself, it's like, um, I know you, you know about this, it's like your beliefs to money. So that can really affect your trading. You have to do some introspection, going, going way back, finding out where these beliefs come from and you, like for me, I came from like a poor family, so there was a lack of money everywhere. And then when I got into trading, I, I, like, I realized that's that was still in my trading, like um, that fear of money, like when you, you're cutting your your losses, uh, your, your profits short, or you you're moving your stock, you're scared of losing the money. So these things creep back into it, into your trading. So yeah, it's a battle, but you you have to uh, you have to overcome it. That's the only way to to be successful in the game. That's it, man. Did it take you a certain amount of time, do you feel, to kind of master that? Um, yeah, it, master it. I wouldn't say I've mastered it. I say it's always there. You just learn to manage it better. 
you know, um, you just get better at, at managing. But yeah, it's always there, but you just the energy is not as strong. Uh, you know what I mean? I if do. that makes sense. Oh yeah, I'll yeah. Never fully master it. It's it's always kind of lingering. No, you never do. There, there's I always a- say that with uh, with tr- trading. Everyone thinks like that you hear you see on that social media, everyone posting the trades. Everyone makes it out like the perfect, but there isn't a perfect trade. You're always going to make mistakes and and have emotions come up sometimes, but it's just about reducing them mistakes and the frequency. You know, you know what I mean? I think that's the key. Yeah. Well, what I noticed on your Twitter is primarily you, you don't post necessarily as much actual trade setups. It's more like uh, if I could say motivation or, or tips and tricks or mental clarities to focus on. Would you say that's kind of more important than better trade, like chart setups? Definitely. I think more, more people can get more out of that than just seeing my winning setup. So, you know what I mean? It means nothing. So yeah, you get more, uh, you'll get more out of tweets and, and things that are more to the psychological side. That's what, because trading is a mental game. I say it's 90%. So that, that's what's really going to help you trading. Love it. Becoming a successful trader mm-hmm. is more about being able to suffer longer than most would endure. Most pe- most don't like to be in pain, but it's the best teacher if used correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go, yeah, man. Absolute facts right so there. That's just like, yeah, just like what I was just saying a minute ago, you have to, uh, you have to face the pain and, uh, and use it as a fuel for the fire to, to get better. And I didn't know that, uh, blue, the blueprint to training psychology, when did this come out? Uh, I think it came out around about October. It's only, only recently co- come out. Okay. Is it on Audible also or just physical copy? No, yeah, it's just uh, down as an ebook at the moment. Uh, you okay. Get through Gumroad. Got it. Well, that that's about to get one more purchase from me, my man. We. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So yeah, trading is ten percent skill, nine percent psychological. You know what's great about that is yeah. I, I love the reinforcement of that because I feel like I think a lot of people feel like I'm like oh man, it's it, it's skill, it's skill, it's skill that I'm missing. Do you think people focus? I guess a better question is what's an application of skill that people should focus on? Well, obviously the mindset is the skill you should be focusing on because if if it was just strategy, everyone would just be trading from home on the laptop. So obviously there's something something else that's causing the failure rate to be so high, and that's the mindset side. So that's the that's the key. Like I said, 10% skill. Everyone can learn the technicals, get better at the technicals, but can you execute it? Can you follow your, your plan? You know, this is where the psychological side comes in. And that's that's the reason why I wrote the book, because it's it, it covers all all the stages in my life as well that I've I've been in with the mindset like what's what's what I've struggled with. So yeah, it's out there to help people help people as well. Mm. So help me figure this out. Start uh, start focusing on your trading system. How would you define a trading system to somebody? How would I define? Mm-hmm. So good question. How would you define it? Well, it's a business plan is how I define it. A plan that tells you what to do before, during, and after. You know, so you're not hesitating. So, and yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. How about you, Jeremy? That's a, that's a good question. I have to think about that one a bit more deeper. To no, I love it, man. It before, during, and after, so that you don't hesitate. Yes, mm. it is, man. It, it's rules because. Mm. Very frequently, individuals, in my opinion, if we have, let's say we have a boss, we have a certain time we have to be at work, we will very frequently show up as close to that time as possible every single day that we're supposed to. Or if we are told by someone else to do something at a specific time or a specific day, we generally do. But if we tell ourselves, all right, I'm going to go to the gym at 6 a.m., I'm waking up tomorrow on a Sunday to get it in. Will we actually do that? Mm. That commitment, those rules, that's a trading system, right? Those rules are you come up with entries, exits, stops, targets, locations, methodologies, charts. 
and you write it down, like you mentioned, into a business plan, into something that you're doing and you're going to repeating over and over and over with a very, very strategic focus, uh, but that focus calling discipline, which right here, discipline beats IQ. And I can agree to that because my IQ is maybe 90. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But I'm pretty disciplined. <laughs> but I'm pretty disciplined. You know, I can I can yeah. stick to something. Yeah, discipline's the way forward. It's it beats everything in the long run. Right. I mean, it's like motivation. Everyone thinks you need motivation, but it only gets you so far, doesn't it? Discipline is what, what gets you there. Okay. So on that note, how do you increase or build your discipline? How do you increase your discipline? Well, what I do. Well, it's actually in a book that, uh, in the book list. It's um, so to create discipline, you have to. It's to do with your self image. So if you, if you want to create someone who, a self image of someone who's disciplined, you need to create evidence in favour of that. So some like so you could do this outside of trading. So for example, what I'll do a little funny story. So whenever I have a shower, like the last twenty seconds, I'll put it to the coldest setting, and I'll do this every day without fail. And uh, I find it analogous to, uh, to to trading. It's uncomfortable, but I do it consistently anyway. So that that's the uh, that's what I do. So what I'm doing there is I'm building little wins. So every time I do that, I literally I yell, I celebrate, I, I do it with real emotion. And it's what I'm doing there. I'm building um, a self image of myself that I'm a disciplined and consistent person. So you need to celebrate these little wins outside, or even in your trading, really celebrate when you when you are disciplined instead of reacting emotionally when you when a negative happens because that only builds a negative belief about yourself so i think celebrating when you are disciplined with emotion that's what creates the self-image so that's what i do with discipline so i hope i made sense with that you did okay that is mm. great advice all right creates create small wins but do th but make those wins slightly uncomfortable so that you have to do them anyway Come, yeah, they come yeah up even with, if it's just little win, mm -hmm. like really like my, minor things, as long as you, but as long as you, you do them consistently and you celebrate them with emotion, you, you're creating that, that self image of someone who is that that person. Right. How did you learn your technical analysis? Technical analysis. Well, I spent thousands of, on courses, different mentors, read hundreds of books, and then somewhere along the line, you just you, you create your own style. And uh, for me, it was about knowing myself. So it was like I didn't want all, all, I didn't want a strategy that was overcomplicated. I wanted to I wanted something that was mechanical. So I started developing and testing my own systems. And eventually, I came up with like rule based methods, which is basically you're trading discretionary systems, but in a systematic way that makes it almost like me mechanical trading. So the rules are very strict, but it's more sim simplified as well. So yeah, for me, I don't want long lists of rules to follow because I'll just I'll just get um, over confused. So yeah, that, that's how I how I did it really. Just grinded it out. Yeah, bought yeah, the courses, bought the books. Lot what it yeah. takes work. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> I I, me I remember uh, watching a podcast with you once, and I remember you saying about you uh, you back tested every day, didn't you, for for like years or something? Yeah non-stop you went back as far as like the like the world wars and stuff yep and uh yeah that, that's how you find it though isn't it just just persistence that's it man yeah, yeah. Per persistence like fi find something that you can just kind of repeat and just kind of ingrain it as deeply as you can because the technical analysis what i heard from you just a moment ago is that eventually it just it kind of clicks you you yeah. get it and you think that you're like okay cool i understand this now and then once that clicks that aspect slowly evolves over time still but you will then understand where to buy and where to sell and how yeah. to make money it, it just takes time doesn't it like you have to just do a lot of different i think a lot of different strategies mentors and eventually you take bits of everything and then you mold it into something of, you, of your own don't you your own sculpture you could say kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah absolutely man yeah all right so tell me alan what's your worst trade of all time <laughs> my worst trade of all time uh, what, what comes to mind is probably uh, when I first started I remember this trade on um, Euro Pound and it was really overextended and I was like man this has to reverse it has to and uh, I just I, I kept I kept shorting it and it kept going higher and then I'm like got to short it keep 
keep raising my stops, kept doing it, kept doing it. And then the pain just got a bit too much. And uh, I can always remember, I was literally sitting there every day, just watching every single tick, man. It was, just, <laughs> it was it's embarrassing to, to say now. But uh, yeah, and then uh, I got out and then shortly after that, as the market plays a sick joke on you, it reversed all the way down. So that that's a, but that was a painful lesson, but it was a lesson learned. And yeah, it, it did did me a favor, really. So I'll probably <laughs> say that one, Jeremy. How about you, man? Oh, dude, I know exactly which one, man. <laughs> <laughs> Silver, <laughs> silver bubble, 2011. Oh. Yeah, I, I own the Guinness, oh. the Guinness World Record for buying silver at its highest price. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, like I was the guy, like the print. I, I truly do think. I mean, without, I mean, I'm re- really not even exaggerating. I truly do think I never, there never has been a tick higher than where I bought silver at. Um, really? Yeah, and I did it with like ex- options that expired that week, so. It's good times. Yeah, good times. And it just absolutely <laughs> tanked. And I, I had tons of time, yeah. tons of tons of awareness to get out. But what happens is in the in those times where you're you're just totally wrong. Yeah. You get afraid because then if you pull the trigger, you immediately all the things of I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I shouldn't be doing this, everyone was right, I'm an idiot. If I lock in this loss, I'm gonna have to admit it. If I admit it, everyone's gonna say, I told you so, I don't wanna be that person. I don't want to be wrong. All of those things happen subconsciously, but a hundred thousand times a second. And they just repeat over and over and over. And it's a, it makes it extremely impossible or it very, makes it very difficult, especially for a new trader to pull the trigger and to exit yeah. the position. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I love this one, by the way, mm-hmm. man, this tweet. So this is so, so true. I had a gentleman named Michael uh, not too long ago. He was just having a streak of losers. Bang, 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 back at back after mm-hmm. back. I was like, hey, bro, I think the best yeah. thing for you to do right now is to take like three, four days off from the market. Just like lock it mm-hmm. in, walk away. Don't look at charts. Don't don't look at the computer. Just close it away. So when you say take a break, is that kind of what you're referring to? Yeah, 100%. It's a weird thing um, when, when you're in a more, like when you go through them, um, losing streaks, emotional, emotional streaks. So taking a bit of time away is the best thing you can do, but also reflect you can also reflect better when you're away from the charts because sometimes you don't know if it is the strategy or if it is you so just getting away from it all you can start to have clearer thoughts about what what it is you're actually doing and then when you go back to it you, you, you're you more refreshed aren't you yeah man alan dude i had this crazy yeah. like this this thing that popped in my head the other day that made so much sense so yeah what sport are you into sport yeah um, bo- boxing. I okay. used to be a, uh, an, an ex-boxer. Oh, nice. Okay. I, I thought you were yeah. a male model, but boxing makes sense. <laughs> I'll go with that. I'll t- <laughs> we'll take boxing. But okay, so let's say yeah. let's say a pro boxer. How long is a how long is a fight? Um, it depends. If, like if you're doing the amateurs, it can be three rounds of uh, two minute. Okay. So that's two. That's six minute. Yep. Obviously, if you're like a pro, that's twelve rounds of three minute. Twelve rounds of three minutes. So you're talking 30, 36 minutes. Give or take. Yeah, long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when people trade, how long do they trade for? What do you mean? How long do they trade for? How long are they in front of the computer on in in one given day on average? You think? Well, the average trader. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on if it's if it's a new trader. I imagine a long time. I imagine, and if it's a pro, then obviously not that much. Yeah. So. Newer, let's say if you're three years or less into trading, there's like there's a strong likelihood that if you're listening to this or watching this, what you're doing is actually you're trading too much, way too much. Yeah. You're you're trying to like, oh, I need to get in the reps, I need to get in the time. There, there's a very distinct difference between practicing and trading. So in this boxing arena, Alan mentions 12 rounds, three minutes each, right? So it's 36 minutes. This is a pro. This is a professional. Someone's getting paid hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of dollars or currency units to get paid to box. But if you are a trader, okay, so let's say a professional or not, you spending, imagine this, seven, eight hours a day in front of the charts trading, right? Trying to get it back, looking for the next trade, having available money, 
ready to go into the market, ready to deploy so that you can get your losses back or that you can climb out of that hole. That's damaging. Right? That's that's going to lead to burnout. At least I think so. Yeah. Be- because when I when I, when you're talking about me going back into, you know, 19, 1920s and starting back trading the, the Dow Jones, that that's practice, right? I can't make money off of those moves. This is me looking at charts, but I don't have any money able to deploy or ready to deploy so that I'm not worried about it. So that, that way I can go back and sharpen the skills of technical analysis. So this, yeah, is, what, this is what taking a break means is like step back and you, when you're talking about journaling, right? What did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. What did I do right? Find the, find the silver lining and then yeah, relax. Because again, <laughs> if you are a trader, man, you're spending six, seven hours a day in the grind every single day. Even if you're, I mean, six hours is longer than any professional sport is going to play in an entire week by by hours. And if you do that in one day, you're already maxing out your mental capacity. That's kind of my my take. Yeah. What do you think? No, that's a good point. Yeah, no, very well said. Like I say, with your sport analogy, it's like you should, you should spend 80%, 80% of your time like testing or getting ready for trading. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like um, you saying Bolt. He, he runs 20 seconds, but he spends four years preparing for that. Mm. And that's how it should be with trading, isn't it? You shouldn't be on, like you say, you shouldn't be trading for six, seven hours a day. You should be preparing, getting ready for it. And then and then um, relaxing, like you say. You, do, you don't want to get the burnout. Burnout's a real thing. And it's not something you realise till I think, later in your, your, your trading career, when you start getting a bit better at it, you realise it's, it's a genuine thing. But I think a lot of people don't want to... Um, confirm it really because they want to trade you know like you say they don't yeah. want to get away from the charts they want to keep trading because if i keep trading out i'll make more money bro you know that right that's the misconception <laughs> isn't it that's it <laughs> yeah uh, if i take 50 <laughs> trades uh, the fo- the 40 that i took earlier that, that, that didn't work if i take 10 50 that's more it. it's gonna work out <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but less is more. Less, less is, is more. more. So this, this, I love this piece right here, man. Don't overthink it. Take the trade. So when we're talking about this aspect of like trading psychology, when we're discussing this emotional capacity, right? The practicing, when you say Bolt's practicing for four years for that 20 second moment to get paid, I want that to really sink in to everyone who's listening to this and or watching this. Your goal in this stage is to get really good at being able to recognize a pattern, some type of system, some type of trade setup, something that you like. And when you see it, bang, take it and move on. Yeah. That's it. And you can get into that habit of when you see it, you take it, you move on. You see it, you take it, move on. Because a really good trader, someone who's absolutely just incredible at this system and this game, I think can look at a chart and within 10 seconds know if they're going to get into the trade or get into a position on that on that stock, and if so, where. And if they take it, they can make money with it. They can set up the parameters and then walk away. If you force yourself to be that kind of speed, I think you're going to do really well at this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree, Jeremy, agree. Like our boy Mark Douglas, money is made by execution, not analysis. Yeah. 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 What is uh? What are some of your favorite trading books? Favorite trading books? Oh, I've got <coughs> I've got quite a few. Um, obviously, Trading the Zone classic. That's that's the one that uh, gives you that paradigm shift in thinking. Mm. Um, I quite like uh, Mark Minervini's books. I think it, just all full of wisdom, especially his new one. I don't know if you read it, Jeremy. The uh, Winning Mindset Secrets. I think it's called. No, Secrets for Winning Mindsets. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's a brilliant book. Um, and then outside of training books, um, I, probably, I really like your book, to be honest. Your uh, Money Grows on Trees. That's thanks, a really dude. good one. Just a little plug in there for you. Oh, thanks, bro. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, But I'd say the one book that probably changed my whole perspective before even trading was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm. Have you ever read, read that? Oh, dude, classic. That, that, book, that, book, that book changed me for the, uh, better, the better. Are, are you doing any real estate trading or investing at all? No, no, it's something I'm looking into, but it's just I'm just I just don't get excited about it at the moment. You know what I mean? I like that so answer. That's yeah, it's got to excite me a bit. Really, but <laughs> maybe like in the future we'll see. Sure, we'll see. Sure. Ah, that's awesome, man. Well, 
I think, I mean, you mentioned it off camera before we started the interview, but the, and then also during the interview, but the money piece, all of this being tied up into how you feel about money, how you act about it, because that's what you're trading, right? You're trading, all you're mm -hmm. trading is money and other people's emotions. And so those are the two things that we have to study the most. Exactly. If you can control your emotions then you've got, you've got a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Do you ever do in-person events, Alan? No, I've been asked to, I've been asked to do a few. Um, again, possibly it is something that, that does excite me because, um, I like to see people in person and, you know, connect with people. I think you, you, you get on a, a better level and a deeper level with people and you can make a, a bigger impact. So that is definitely something I'd like to do in the future. Yes. Okay. But nice. not, not doing it currently. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, when you do, man, make sure you give me a call. Yeah. Yeah. 100%, man. If you have, also, an, uh, if you have an event, I love it. I love that at least minimum sit down and learn from you. Right. I got my, I got my notebook. I got my pen and paper. Like <laughs> we, you, we have to take notes, always be learning. Always. I mean, you got learn, mm -hmm. trade, grow right there. Yeah, always exactly. be that's learning. It. That's my philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. Always be you learning. You can never, never stop learning. Learning doesn't stop after school. It's a, uh, it's, it lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, are you going to trade any other asset class or is just, you think you're just going to stick to Forex? Well, maybe in the future, like I say, if it's broke, then don't fix it. It's working well trading what I'm trading at the moment. But I mean, crypto is another one. I mean, I've, I've tested it a bit and my, my systems work well on that. So I could maybe branch out into crypto eventually. Um, yeah, I've been asked if I, if I like to trade stocks. That's possibly another one. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But right now, I'm happy with, with what sure. I've got. Yeah, totally, man. And again, so, team, so we're talking since 2015. So that's seven years. My man's been grinding at the exact same asset <laughs> class. And that, that's a bonus. Yeah. That's a positive. Because I, I think... Ironically enough, it was about the same for me. It was very close to six years before I did anything other than stocks. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stocks and crypto, but that, that uh, crypto was more accidental realistically, but it was before I branched into something that was different. So when I say different, so the reason I do like crypto personally, Alan, is because it, it moves the same as stocks as far as like dollar for dollar. Like there's no change, right? With futures and commodities and Forex, you have leverage, you have pips or you have ticks, like it's different measurements. Right. Crypto is if you buy it, you know, you buy a thousand whatever and it goes up a dollar, you make a thousand dollars. Right. But with Forex, right, you, yeah. you have lots and then, you know, futures, you have pips. So, or ticks, sorry, ticks, uh, not pips. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you yeah. just have different units of measurement and not that that's specifically a negative, but uh, I just focus on one lane for a very long time. Yeah. I think. It, you got to be a specialist, aren't you, in what you do and just know it inside out. It's when you start something new, it, it, it's a you know you're going to have to be making some mistakes and stuff. So I think that's always in the back of your mind a little bit, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, if it, but like I say, if it works for you, then what's the point in changing it? But that's, you have got to be able to adapt to the markets. I do, I do understand that side. So tell me for a moment, then, um, really quick, just from like some life mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. How do you schedule everything? I mean, with your, with your family and all of that, like what's, what's that like? Like my schedule. Um, I always try and balance it out the best I can. Um, so I mean, I mainly trade during the day and then the evening time. Um, I'll obviously spend a bit of time with my family, my, my, my girlfriend. And then uh, I, I'm literally quite unbalanced really. Like trading is like my main focus. Like everything evolves around that. I know I, I know it's a silly thing to say, but that's how it is. Um, but yeah, um, like I say, most of my day is dedicated to trading. And then at night, it's my, I mainly um, spend time with my girlfriend and stuff like that. And then again, just before I go to bed, I'll, 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 leave, I'll be doing something for trading. I'll either be reading or testing something. Yeah. But I think that's the way you need to be at the beginning anyway. I think you need to be unbalanced in, like trading has to be the priority if you want to make it. And then eventually you can, fit things fit, fit things around it and then you know what i mean as you get yeah get more successful i, I call it i call it an equilibrium because in the sense of mm. like there's there's these waves and flows right i don't think balance exists i think it's just like what what leg are you standing on to kind of support the other one for that moment because yes mm. like the, the unbalanced piece that i want everyone to hear is it to me again it sounds like you're you're studying you're reviewing trades you're reviewing setups 
you're journaling, you're reading, you're reading other books, you're getting your mindset right. And then you go in and you'll take, you'll take a trade if you see it. Maybe, like I said, one a day, which is not very much. I think that's probably surprising to most people, especially since you consider yeah. yourself a day trader. I know, I know. Yeah. I know. Cool. Yeah, very, very low amount of trades. I mean, if I'm lucky, I get two. But, yeah, usually one a day. So, yeah. Love it, man. Love it. Well, Alan, this has been. Well, I like that, though. I, go ahead. Sorry, go no, 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 go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but I like it. Because uh, I know I'm separating myself from the herd. And, you know, most people can't wait that long for a trade. And uh, so, yeah, I know I've got an edge over other over people. So it kind of makes me feel good in a weird, weird way. You know, I appreciate you saying that. That just that just stirred an emotion in me because I think a lot of people forget that there is a degree and an aspect to this game where you have to be better than other people. So ask yourself, what are other people doing and how can you be better than them? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, what are the bank managers doing? What are the hedge fund managers doing? What are the what are the trade? What's that nineteen year old trader doing sitting behind a desk in, <laughs> in New York City? You know, who's been paid twenty thousand dollars a year to learn this industry? Like, what is he doing with his mouse? And what could you be doing differently? How can you live? How can you live a better life? How can you think differently? How can you act differently? How can you trade differently? than other people because there are other people behind the screen yeah that's it that's it you gotta be better than other people i like that man you have you've got to sharpen your edge you have. yeah totally mm. yeah i like that you have. well cool man um dude thank you for spending time with me well thank you for having me jeremy it's been a pleasure yeah no you're super welcome man it's it's always an honor uh to to reach out because I had I had no idea you you even knew who I was when I reached out to you, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Been following you for a while. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, and uh, yeah. I think one of my one of my trading buddies just like retweeted your stuff, and I was like, oh, that's a great quote. Clicked on it. Actually, before I let you go, Alan, how do you come up with all of your stuff, yep. man? I mean, because you you write a lot. <clears throat> so when do you spend time to do that? Um, I usually just do a bit every day. Um, just yeah, I just I usually write a bit in the morning and then. Uh, if I'm reading, I usually something will hit, and then I write that down. I usually like, have notes all over the place, either in my phone or uh, in a in my journal. I'll just jot down, and then yeah, I just I just I just write. Really, there's no there's no real formula. I just make sure I write every day, um, and yeah, just just bro, just that's try. the formula. You're doing it every day. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the secret. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Eventually, if you do something every day, you get better at it, I suppose. That's it, dude. That is it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of individuals talk about writing books and like the challenges of it and the struggles of it. And it's like, listen, yeah. if you just sit down and grind it out every day, even if it's five yeah. words, five sentences, or five pages, like if you can just get pen, pen to paper <clears throat> every that's day, so the book will come done. Yeah, that well, that's what happened with my book. I mean, for a long time, I put, I always wanted to write a book, and I always put it off. You know, like that 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 feeling of being overwhelmed. You know, with oh, I've got about hundreds of pages, but if you break it down to them little steps, like I'll just I'll just write five words today, and if you just say that to yourself, then you end up writing a page. You know what I mean? And you just do that every day, and eventually you've got a book. Like you say, do that for a uh, three six five you've got a book <laughs> that's it man <laughs> you got a book yeah. most people don't feel like they have a story worth telling which is the unfortunate part because everyone does everyone has a skill an attribute a knowledge mm. center an experience that will that will help others immensely they just feel like they don't unfortunately yeah it's that it's, it goes back to the belief systems and they don't feel the, the way of it yep yeah. All right, man. Last question, Alan. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Oh, um, oh I've got so many. Uh, one that I always revert back to is uh, I love the Rocky movies. I love them. They always inspire me. There. What you a know? great, the great series of films. Yeah. 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 A cinematic and emotional <laughs> yeah. adventure for sure. Yeah, man. Definitely. What about you? What's yours? Forrest Gump. Oh, what a film. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love that film. That's one of my faves as well. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. That is, that's it for me. Well, Alan Owen, the Divergent Trader, thank you so much for your time, for your energy, for your knowledge. Yep. 
I am quite confident that this recording interview podcast will help at least one person become a more profitable trader and thus enrich lives around the world. That's why we did it. So man, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Appreciate yeah, it. My pleasure. Have Take great, care, man. You too, buddy. Have a great one. <laughs>